Uh, so we'll now call the April 27th meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board to order. This meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely for the governor's extension of the remote meeting provisions from the executive order of March 12th, 2020 due to the COVID-19 virus. For this meeting, the ARB is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We'll now take roll call to ensure that everyone from the board is here and uh, can hear me. We'll start with Kim. Present. Uh, Jean Benson. Present. Melissa Tintakoulis. Here. Steve Revlak. Good evening, Madam Chair. Good evening. I'm Rachel Zenberry, uh, the chair of the board. I'll also introduce uh, Jenny Jennifer Wright, who's, um, director of the Department of Planning and Community Development. Here. And Kelly Lima, the um, assistant director. Present and apologies for the technical difficulties. No problem. Thank you for getting us all in tonight. All right. Um, so at this time, we have one agenda item, and that is the continued public hearing um, for docket number 3690 at 34 Dudley Street. And it looks like uh, Bob and Essie, the attorney for the applicant, and the applicant are here with us this evening. Uh, Bob will go ahead and hand it over to you. Um, before you kick off, I will just note that we have um, a hard stop this evening at 745 because uh, we have town meeting uh, in the town that will be commencing at 8 o'clock and we have a few members uh, who need to jump to that. So um, if you could take us through the uh, revisions, any anything that you'd like to top line, um, in addition to what new materials were, were posted, that would be great. And then after that, I'll hand it over to um, Jenny and Kelly for any update that the department would like to make, and then we'll um, move to discussion from the board. Thank you, Rachel. Thank uh, you. I'm, I'm going to be very brief. Uh, I do have our team with us this evening. And the team will consist of the first speaker will, will be Eric Girard, the civil engineer. After Eric, a traffic engineer, Matthew Keesley, uh, the architect, Jan Bryan, uh, Jesse Morgan for operational testimony, and available for questions, Pete Williams, and I would be available as well. I just want to say, uh, and I'm going to be very brief, uh, that we have made some very substantial changes to our proposal following the last hearing. We've tried to address a lot of the comments made by the members of the ARB. I believe we have, but we are going to have even more changes that we are going to uh, present this evening to the members of the ARB as well for some of the items that perhaps were not addressed. Uh, so I, what I'd like to do uh, in light of the fact that I know we're up against that hard stop for town meeting, I'd like to get into the guts of the matter, and the guts of the matter is not going to be presented by me, but rather by members of the team. But I want to keep in mind and have the members of the ARB keep in mind, we're talking about an industrial zone, not a residential zone and not a business zone, but an industrial zone. Eric, you want to jump in, please? Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, I think uh, Jesse was going to kind of hop in to, to start us off with some of the operational stuff, but um, I don't know, Jenny, if you could pull up the um, PowerPoint presentation, we can kind of start going through with that. Um, so this is just our, our header page here showing the updated kind of site plan um, with the uh, mini rendering. So you can move on to the next, uh, keep it going. Um, and then, you know, the, these are just the initial project, the, the, the project updates that we have included that we're going to be talking a little bit more in detail. Um, so this just kind of identifies kind of upfront, bam, this is what we, what we did. We tried to hit all the main points that were brought up and we feel like this project that we're coming back with now um, is really enhanced. It really hit the points and um, I, I really hope you're, uh, you're happy with the revisions that were made. Um, so yeah, we can move on to the next page. Um, so I'll let, let Jesse kind of talk through some of these operational um, pieces to start. Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Jesse Morgan. I'm an SVP with Premier Storage Investors offices at 530 Oak Court Drive, Memphis, Tennessee. 
Uh, as Eric said, before we get into the site plan, I just wanted to address some of the public questions uh, we've received over the past month uh, regarding our company history or the security plan and how we intend to restrict the use of trucks larger than the largest U-Haul. Uh, Premier Storage Investors uh, was formally founded in 2013. In that time, we've acquired 55 cell storage facilities for either existing or for development. And we still own 29 of those facilities. Of all the properties we've sold, uh, every single one still remains a cell storage facility today. Regarding security, we shared a security plan with the board, uh, which was on, posted on the site. You know, just for further detail, all those doors are locked, can only be accessed by our customers. Uh, we each have a unique access code. Uh, each customer has a different code, so we know who's going in the property and when they're going and when they're leaving. Furthermore, the, as you can see, there's a significant number of cameras that monitor uh, all the activity on the site over 24 hours. And then also we received some questions regarding our trash enclosure and the use of the dumpster. That dumpster is for customer use, is not for customer use at all. It is only for the use of, uh, of, our, of our manager. It is locked and then enclosed and it is visible from a security camera. If customers are using the trash enclosure, they are in violation of their, their lease agreement or subject determination, and we do know when it happens. Customers are required to take all of their belongings off the site. And then the last item is regarding the truck traffic. Um, need to correct something from our conversation uh, last month. You know, we mistakenly said 24 feet when in fact the largest U-Haul is actually 26 feet. So we will be restricting box trucks with a larger than 26 feet. Uh, which is the largest U-Haul and won't allow anything else on the site. We accomplish uh, this via both verbal and electronic communication on our website to all customers. And then also on the site plan, Eric Gerade has noted a sign that he's placed on the front of the building, uh, notifying anyone entering the site that no box trucks greater than 26 feet are allowed. As such, any customer that violates that restriction, uh, similar to using the dumpster, they are in violation of their lease agreement and subject determination. Once again, all those customers are visible on camera, which monitors the activity on the site 24 seven. So just wanted to cover all of that. Uh, thank you all for your time and then turn it back over to Eric so he can get into the meat and potatoes of the site plan. Thanks, Jesse. Um, yeah, we can move to the next. Oh, next one. All right. So the, the major site improvements that we've made since last, um, the last meeting that we've had, um, to, to achieve the increase in parking spaces, uh, we had to do some building modifications and primarily reducing that first floor um, area, as you can see, to, to fit additional spaces. So the, the overall building square footage dropped uh, by about 2,800 square feet. Um, and in doing so, we're able to also reduce impacts um, closer to Millbrook. Um, as you can see on the, on the top side of the building, that used to be a little bit more angled and chamfered, and now we get a lot more green space back there as well. Um, so that was a benefit that came out of it, and, and I'll get into some of the stormwater improvements that that allowed us to do as well. Um, we, we are increasing the parking by 12 spaces to get to that 23 required um, that is allowed to be reduced to the 25% um, for the total building area. Um, additionally, um, we have the new uh, updated enhanced pedestrian amenities along the front. We moved um, some of the park, the bicycle parking spaces to the front as requested, um, while also keeping uh, the bicycle parking in the rear and um, the, the employee spaces within the building as well. Um, the ADA space was moved uh, closer to the front entrance. Um, as, as previously noted, uh, this will allow better access with, with those new parking spaces that we were able to add. Um, it, it, it allowed that to shift as well. Um, other improvements related to stormwater management. Um, we looked at the NOA plus storms um, which significantly increased those rainfall rates um, that was requested and probably where the, the mass stormwater standards are heading in the, in the near future. So we, we were able to achieve um, the same parameters that we were looking at. The other stormwater management improvement was along the westerly boundary. So on the right side of this plan that you're looking at, we had a series of uh, area drains and pipes that was directly discharged out to the rear of the property towards Millbrook. We are now proposing to collect that in a swale 
which will then discharge into a, another rain garden in the, in the back of the property there, which will retain treat um, prior to and allowing it to naturally flow overland, which it is currently doing today. Um, so that was a, a, another improvement. In doing so, we were also able to save um, a, two clusters of trees back there um, that we originally thought we were gonna be uh, eliminating the, the, the topmost trees on the backside there. Um, other, other site for landscape improvements were the planting beds along that westerly edge. Uh, there was a concern about potential parking over there. Um, so we did, we staggered them um, to allow for additional uh, plantings to visually impede anyone from trying to do that, as well as adding a, a fence along the entire rear property line, similar to the fence that's out there. Today, there'll be a new fence. Um, we'll be planting on uh, one side of it on Millbrook. And then as we get to the rear of the building, swap those plantings onto the site side. So visually, um, for the abutters looking back, they'll, they'll see the screen on that side as well. Uh, so those are primarily the, the major site improvements that we wanted to highlight that we did, did make. Um, and I'd like to uh, hand it over to Matt now to run through the, the traffic discussion as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Uh, again, my name is Matt Keeley. I'm a traffic engineer with VHB. Um, I know we were tight on time last time, uh, so I just want to reemphasize a couple of things from last meeting and just clarify a couple uh, things from questions we received. So first, uh, our traffic memo that we provided um, uh, showed a comparison of ITE trip generation data for the existing use versus the proposed use. Now that comparison showed that the proposed use will generate substantially less traffic than the existing use. We also provided some supplemental data from empirical counts that we, uh, that we had done at other similar sites. Um, as part of that discussion, there was a question about what month we counted those sites and that other months of the year might be higher than what we uh, presented in the memo. Uh, I just wanted to clarify that those counts were provided as an additional comparison, just to give some additional context. Uh, the seasonality of the empirical data has no impact on the conclusion of the study. Uh, our conclusion was based solely on the ITE data. Uh, one additional point I wanted to make is related to parking. Uh, we showed last time that based on our available data that we had more than adequate parking uh, on the previous plan. Um, as Eric went through, we uh, have since increased that parking significantly. Uh, and what that does is it ensures that the proposed use will not need to use uh, any on-street parking, whereas the, uh, the existing use relied heavily on uh, on-street parking uh, and, and related uh, and caused some congestion in the area. Uh, so those were really the main points I wanted to make on traffic. Uh, and with that, with that, I'll pass it over to Jan. Jan, are you there? Hello. Is that better? Can you hear me? And yes, we can hear you. Fantastic. Thank you. I hope you can see me as well. Um, if you could uh, go to the next slide, I think we've got four elevations. Uh, we'll start with that one, that's fine. Um, just wanted to uh, uh, recognize, obviously, this is a, a completely different building than what you saw uh, before. Uh, we took into account uh, all of the comments that were presented at the last meeting. And just wanted to let you know that um, uh, we have uh, increased the articulation of the building. We decided that the metal uh, that we had previously shown uh, just didn't lend itself to the amount of articulation we wanted to achieve. So we decided to uh, go completely with uh, EFAS uh, and much more brick than we had shown uh, originally. So we've increased the amount of masonry uh, on all sides of the building and used uh, that EFAS material as a way to uh, add articulation to the building. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, uh, Jenny, I think we've got three or four uh, elevations on the back that might help um, Describe. So you'll see we have added uh, uh, additional glazing uh, on uh, the, um, the sides of the buildings. We've added some articulation, particularly uh, in the one area that we wanted that, that uh, originally was a, a white EPIS panel, added some color, some glazing and articulation on that side. Uh, the rear, uh, completely different, obviously. Uh, Eric mentioned that we did uh, shorten the footprint and uh, have added some screen panels. Uh, these are very similar to uh, some that were presented uh, previously and uh, uh, panels that I think are even uh, existing currently uh, within the town. So we've added three of those. Uh, they're about 18 
feet uh, wide by 42 feet tall. Uh, and currently we're showing a kind of a tree pattern uh, just to kind of match uh, what folks would uh, see looking through the trees from the Millbrook side. Um, from the front of the building, uh, we have added uh, glazing uh, at the um, at the front of the building where the sales office is. Uh, we have reduced the signage, pulled that down to the front to try to help uh, from a wayfinding standpoint uh, show where the office is. Uh, and additionally, uh, just um, uh, decrease the signage uh, overall. We've removed signs that were on the building originally. I did want to say something particularly to the solar. We have made a commitment to uh, do solar. Uh, and I know there was a comment uh, that we just didn't show that on the roof plan. Uh, we're in the middle of um, trying to determine uh, exactly how much area we need to provide. We know there's a 50 percent, uh, but uh, we're, we're moving toward uh, an option just to make sure that we get uh, the solar in place. So that's the reason you don't see that. We just didn't want to present something that ultimately we wouldn't be able to provide. So uh, the commitment is there. We just want to make sure that we've got the uh, consultant in place to help us make sure we show it correctly. Uh, just on a real quick note, uh, one of the comments specifically was to the uh, leaders, uh, the roof leaders that we have showing along one elevation. Uh, with the redesign and the kind of the added articulation, the vertical glazing that we've added on a number of the elevations, uh, in our opinion, uh, leaving the, the leaders in the color that we have really did more to enhance uh, the articulation of the building. Uh, and so that, I just want to make a comment, we did look at kind of recoloring those uh, and trying to minimize those visually. Uh, but from our opinion, uh, this helped with the articulation of buildings. So that's why you see those uh, continue to be um, in the brown kind of bronze color that you see. Uh, so that's all I have. I'll turn that back over uh, to um, whoever's next. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, uh, that pretty much is what we'd like to say, I believe, uh, uh, Jesse and uh, Eric. Uh, and if that is the case, then uh, I think we're here to entertain any questions that uh, the members of the board may have for us. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and I, I just want to add um, my thanks for how responsive you all were to the, the comments of the board. Um, I, I appreciate all of the, 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 the changes that were incorporated and the clarifications that you've provided um, to, the, to the questions that were posed. Um, uh, very helpful to, to see such a thorough package. Um, I'll now turn it over to uh, Jenny Ray to see if there's anything that she would like to add from the perspective of the uh, Department of Planning and Community Development. Thank you, Rachel. And I, I concur with you that I think that the applicant was relatively responsive to a lot of the comments that were provided by the board um, and others um, in the prior um, hearing. And I think that the applicant has also addressed some of the outstanding issues that we might see either in a forthcoming here, um, you know, continued hearing or um, in another round of materials or something that would could potentially be addressed through the decision. Um, the memo notes sort of some of those outstanding areas. One of them was the solar, which was discussed already. I don't think I um, will say anything further about that. Um, we also made, you know, a couple of other observations, but, you know, I think overall everything that had been requested was uh, predominantly addressed. There, I think one area where I still have questions is around the stormwater. Um, and that might be something that the board is interested in discussing. I know that the applicant has filed with the Conservation Commission and is still under review. Um, so there might be some further discussions that engage the Conservation Commission as part of that, um, the resolution of that particular issue. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Rachel, and other members of the board. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, so at this point, what I'd like to do is uh, open this up to the board for any questions. Um, we will try and take public comment this evening if we have time. Um, and so what I'd like to please request the board do is focus on the new materials that were provided. Um, any topics that we discussed and addressed in our last meeting, I'd like to not revisit uh, this evening if at all possible so that we can really focus on the, the revised materials. So we'll start with Ken. Uh, thank you, Rachel. Uh, I also like to thank uh, thank you guys for um, 
uh, addressing uh, a lot of the issues that we uh, had brought up at the last meeting. Um, I, I personally do not have any issues with the exterior gutters as far as um, being unsightly. I think they do break up the scale a little bit, but the way you have it right now, I wish you could uh, look at it a little bit more and somehow um, use those vertical lines to be more integrated with your uh, EFIS design. Right now, it looks just like you have your EFIS design with a couple of um, um, main leaders running over the design. If you, you sort of integrate those two, so it, so they're a little more harmoniously, it'd, it'd be better. Uh, that's just uh, a request, uh, uh, one request I have right now. Uh, I appreciate the fact you uh, continue the fence along the back to block the lighting from the uh, from the park and cars to go into the uh, the playing field. That's a that's a good that's a very good thing, and you, and the fact that you added bushes along the west um, side yard to uh, prohibit cars from parking on the grass. I think that would have been a turn into a really ugly mess. Um, the thing you did with the signage is great. You uh, located it over the sign, reduced some of the signage. Uh, I still have an issue with your uh, monument sign. I don't think it's appropriate here. Uh, most monument signs are um, meant for more uh, rural areas or along uh, uh, highways where you, you, you're looking for more speed and looking for signage. This right here, you're not going that fast. This is a very uh, tight street, and you'll be coming down. You'll know where the building is. You don't have to. You don't. You're not relying on the, the monument sign to locate the building or such. So I would like you guys to reconsider again, uh, eliminating the monument sign along the front. I notice your uh, renderings don't show it. It looks good that way. I appreciate that, but your site plan still show the monument sign. And you show the details for it. Um, uh, thanks for adding the bike rack inside. And um, that's all I have right now. I'm uh, supportive of, the, of this project. I think uh, with a few minor tweaks, we're, we're there. And I appreciate the changes you've done as far as breaking down the scale of the elevations, adding windows, and so forth. Thank you, Ken. Jean. Yes, thank you. I also appreciate uh, the changes you've made, I have a few questions. Um, I appreciate your commitment to uh, putting solar on the roof. I think that's the right thing to do. And I look forward to um, learning what it is and how it will operate so that we can approve this permit with that known. Um, can you tell me what material the fencing will be? It's shown as sort of a brown fence. What material will it be? Yeah, yeah, it's a it's, it's a wood wooden stockade fence. Okay, thanks. Um, <clears throat> for you mentioned that there's a lease agreement between your customers and you for use of the space. Um, do you anticipate? putting the truck size limitation into the lease agreement? Uh, yes, it can, it can very easily be implemented. Yeah, I, I think it would be good to have both the um, truck size and the lease agreement and also um, that there won't be any parking for your customers on Dudley Street that they'll need to use um, the parking lot. I think those two additions to the lease would be helpful. <clears throat> and I'm wondering, and, and this was in um, Ms. Rate's memo, why the um, sign at the office is illuminated. What's the need for that as opposed to a non-illuminated sign? Eric? Eric? Um, yeah, I guess Jesse, would you want to take the signage or, or Jan? I'm, I'm, I'm happy to looks? I'm happy to speak to that, Eric. I mean, I mean, candidly, the you know the the one thing you want the customer to to know whenever they see your building, number one, the number one thing is is what is this? Number two is is where do I go to use it? 
and the more you can <clears throat> call attention to the area where the office is, which I think signage does, at least for me, and whether it's re uh, going to a retail outlet or, you know, into to, uh, the office of a self-storage facility, it's just, it's just more recognition and of, you know, where the customer goes to use your product. Yeah, and I'm not opposed to the sign. I'm just wondering the necessity to illuminate it. Uh, well, I think if you probably told me, uh, I won't, I won't approve it. <laughs> I won't approve this project if it's eliminated and I will, if it's not, uh, it, it's you know, necessity is not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say necessity. Yeah. I think it's just a better project for us, a better project for the customer, a more, you know, a clearer way. Yeah. I mean, at dusk, you know, in, in the wintertime, it, you know, it gets dark at four o'clock. So, you know, people coming to you from four to six o'clock in the evening, I think won't, it's a help. Won't they be able to see in sort of the glass area and won't the office itself have lights on? It, it will be illuminated. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, yeah. And the reason I ask this is because um, our bylaw would not allow the illumination unless we find that it's in the public interest to allow it. And I'm just... Not sure it's in the public interest, but I'll see what my colleagues on the board um, have to say about that. And um, um, the, the only other question I have is something that came up last time, but it's not changed, Rachel. So I don't know if you'd like me to raise it or not. Uh, if it's something that was raised uh, that was in their list and wasn't addressed, then um, please go ahead. No, it was something I thought about after the meeting, the last meeting. Okay, let's, if we could save that for the discussion, perhaps, okay. so that we can get through public comment, that would be great. great. Thank great. you, Jean. So that's it, thank you. Thank you, Jean. Melissa. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Rachel. Um, well, as you guys know, in terms of the use, I've been, you know, kind of struggling with it. I'm disappointed. Um, it's not, um, you know, in terms of this project, I think it aligns better in a different location. I think based on the master plan and what we've set to sought out for this district, um, I don't see, you know, it fitting into the neighborhood or in the intention of the character of this neighborhood. And so I just want to remain on record saying that going forward. So it's harder for me to make um, aesthetic adjustments to this project when I feel like the use is um, it doesn't meet the special permit criteria, in my opinion. So, so would you like to pass or would you like to? to I just want to kill on record question. saying that now. Thanks, Rachel. Okay, thank you. Steve. Uh, yes, the, um, one comment and two questions. Sure. Uh, so the rendering of the front showed an S, uh, a wave-shaped bicycle rack. Um, I would ask the proponents to consider um, inverted U racks instead. Uh, they tend to be a little more stable. Um, second quest, uh, question, I was wondering if it would be possible to view a site plan showing the parking area. I, I'd like to see how a, a moving truck would enter, you know, uh, navigate into the loading dock and then leave afterwards. Uh, so I will ask the applicant, is that a currently a diagram that you have in the package that Jenny, uh, you can point Jenny to to pull up? Yeah, it's the layout and materials plan that we can talk off of, C3.01 uh, would probably be the best, best plan to see that. Great, thank you. Yep, so on this plan, we have the, the, you know, the 24 foot drive aisle coming uh -huh. in uh, for the two way drive aisle. And then there, there is adequate space around the columns to be able to maneuver a truck um, and back into the loading spaces. Um, and similarly, uh, be, able to, to be able to maneuver and turn out as well. Uh -huh. um, 
so we, so we did look at that. It, it is adequate with the with the charting radii um, for a 26 foot box truck. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. And uh, finally, uh, in order to could you rem could um, a member of you or a member of your team remind me which transportation demand management elements um, you plan to implement for this project? Jesse, or do you want me to jump in, Jesse? Uh, the three we uh, the three we we're leaning to doing is the preferential parking for carpooling. Uh, the covered bicycle parking, uh, bicycle spaces are covered, as well as the employee spaces that are inside. And then we will provide a stipend uh, to employees that do not have uh, motor vehicles of their own, so they can travel to and from uh, their place of work. Okay. And um, did last one, one follow-up question, uh, if, I, if I may, Madam Chair. <laughs> um, would it be possible to see... Um, to see where, which of those parking spaces are the preferential ones. Yep, we can go back to that same plan. So we have um, right next to the ADA, the accessible space, there's that SP1. Mm -hmm. So that was called out as the, um, on the signage chart as the, the carpool, preferential car, carpool spot. All right, thank you. I have no further questions, Madam Chair. Great, thank you, Steve. Um, let's see. So the only item that that I have that I wanted to bring up, I think um, I, I'm still struggling with the um, with the rain leaders on the on the exterior of the building. I think that they um, they really fight with the current way that um, that it's articulated, and I'm speaking specifically to view one here. Um, so I would prefer integrated leaders if you do keep them on the exterior. I agree with Ken in that I'd like them to be um, more integrated with an articulation, um, whether it's a, a color change and some sort of a vertical element that um, that appears in the in the ethos coloration on this side of the building. Um, you know, if that truly is meant to be a continued art articulation, I would just ask that you that you look at that facade and that facade may then um, actually influence the, the opposite facade as well, um, which does have some vertical articulation in the side, um, which, which this side does not. Uh, and that's my only request in addition to what my colleagues have identified. Um, so I'll just run through to see if there are any other questions before I open this up for public comment, and then we'll circle back for um, an additional discussion um, regarding next steps from the board. So I'll just run through quickly to see if there are any additional questions, starting with Ken. Ken, you're on mute. Sorry about that. No I'll, wait, I'll wait for the discussions. OK, great. Thanks. Jean? Yeah, no additional questions at this time. Great, Melissa? No additional questions. Steve? No additional questions. Okay, great. So at this time, I'll go ahead and uh, open this meeting up for uh, public comment. Any member of the public wishing to speak um, uh, or ask any questions regarding this project, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of the screen. Once I call on you, you will have up to three minutes to speak. And uh, I'll ask that you introduce yourself by your first, last name, and address. So we'll give people a minute or a couple, uh, a minute to see if there's any hands raised. All right, uh, seeing none. Madam we... Chair. Oh, sorry, they just went up. I, I want to raise my hand, but I don't seem to be able to. Uh... Do so. Oh, here it is. I've got it. I'm sorry. Got it? Okay, great. Thank you. I have you in the queue. Thank you. Absolutely. So we will uh, start with Don Seltzer. I'm sorry. And before, Don, I haven't started your time yet. Before you uh, start, I just want to let everybody know that I will be closing public comments at 7.30. Um, we'll need to reconvene for um, for uh, board discussion. So in the case that um, more people speak than is time allotted, I just wanted to announce that up front. Go ahead, Don. Thank you, Madam Chair. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. 
Uh, let me begin by saying that several members of the Disability Commission are appreciative of the redesign of the parking area to relocate the ADA parking space to the front of the building next to the office entrance. Um, I want to, I have a few questions to be asked of the applicants regarding other issues of accessibility. Perhaps they can speak on how they have addressed the code requirements for a path of egress from all points in the building, particularly the maximum length, and how they have brought it the necessary safe areas of refuge with communication. On the issue of truck size, could they clarify what is meant by a 26 foot tr um, truck? There is confusion here because if I went to U-Haul a rider and asked for a 26 foot truck, uh, they would rent me one that had an actual total length of over 30 feet. The 26 feet is a measure of just the cargo area. I would also welcome a little more discussion along the lines of what Steve Revelak asked for about the new parking layout and the spacing of the support columns. It appears that the clearance between the columns is only sufficient for a vehicle no larger than a Ford Explorer. A 26 foot rental truck has an outside wheel turning radius of about 40 feet, which is far in excess of the column spacing. Uh, it's not clear to me how such a truck can go in and out of the loading dock without hitting one of the columns. Finally, there is the issue that I addressed in my letter to the board. If Arlington is going to make real progress towards its net zero action plan, it will be necessary for development to be mindful of its impact on neighboring properties. The proposed height and the minimal setbacks of this proposal will seriously encroach upon the solar exposure of a dozen adjacent properties. Criteria K of the Environmental Design Review gives this board the authority to address these concerns. And I'll stop here in case the applicant wishes to respond to my questions regarding path of egress and the ability of trucks to enter and leave the, the loading bays while avoiding the columns. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're actually not going to cover um, interior path of egress. That's under the jurisdiction of the building uh, department, not under uh, the ARB. Um, with regard to the 26 foot truck, I believe that is a standard uh, designation um, within, um, within the industry. Um, and with regard to the clearance between the columns, we can certainly um, return back to the applicant after all of the public discussion has been completed. Um, to to see if there is any clarification that the board would like regarding the, the turning radius. Um, so I'll now move to the next uh, to the next public comment, uh, and I think the next speaker is Anne Leroyer. Uh, thank you, um, Anne Leroyer on Pierce Street. Um, I'm also the chair of the Open Space Committee, and I'm kind of speaking on that um, that basis. Um, I think in general, we're a little concerned about the size and massing of this particular building so close to Millbrook and Wellington Park that, and it's especially because it's on a hill um, way above the brook and the, the park that it just, it's gonna be, it's gonna feel like a, a huge building up there. And it's gonna change the, the contour of that area quite a lot, I think. Um, I understand you've, you know, saving a few more trees and putting in fencing and landscaping and that's all to the good, but um, it's just a general concern about the, the size and massing of the building in that particular location next to the brook and the, the park. Um, another thing that, that was there was concern about is the panels that are on the backside. And I don't understand that on the picture that was shown, it looked like they were reflective panels. Maybe that's not correct, but we were just very concerned that if they were reflective, um, that that would, you know, really cause some problems um, on the park side. So maybe somebody can explain what the material or something of that is if it's not not going to be reflective. Um, and also in terms of the the stormwater and the rain gardens and things like that, I know that you're going to have to go to the con concom for review, and we'll, um, you know, look to their guidance on some of those more technical issues that 
that are also of concern just in terms of the open space and landscaping and um, feeling of the, the whole environment. It's obviously it's an industrial zone and this size of building is allowed, I understand, but it's, um, it's, it's not ideal from our perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'll uh, hold your question regarding um, the information on uh, the, uh, the specific material for the panels um, for the end of public comment, and we will post that to the applicant. Thank you. Um, the next speaker will be Thomas Falwell. Um, good evening. Um, I, I share, I represent uh, the Santinis, who are the owners of 26 Dudley Street. Um, I share a lot of the same concerns that were that were uh, uh, referenced by Mr. Seltzer with respect to the uh, to the the parking uh, that the, the turning radius of the trucks and uh, how the parking will impact that. Um, I think they need to be specific, as he indicated, a 26 foot truck can, can mean different things to different people, and if it's a 30 foot truck, I think we need empirical information to be supplied by the developer that show that these trucks can safely turn in and out of those lot loading docks without impacting either columns or cars who may be parked in the spaces that are, are on the opposite side of the of the lane. And also the question of whether uh, a truck of that size can safely turn in and out of the site on, onto Dudley Street if there is parking on both sides of, the, of Dudley Street as there are oftentimes it is. Um, I have a couple of other questions uh, with respect to it. I asked the question as to whether there is any fill involved in the rear portion of the site. And I haven't looked through, through the package of the new packages materials, but I've asked the applicant to specifically comment on whether in fact fill is necessary at the rear portion of the site. And if so, where and, and, and how much? Um, that's a question that seems unanswered. Um, I also, with respect to the stormwater, it, it looks like they're still talking about discharging into the Mill Brook. And based upon um, your own, the own, your own bylaw, it says specifically that if the building is, is uh, the size of this building, it needs to retain and treat stormwater on the site. It may be treating it, but it's obviously not retaining it if it's discharging it into Mill Brook. So I think that has to be studied uh, and 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 uh, be brought into compliance with the requirement that be not only treated but also retained and not discharged into Millbrook. Um, shadowing is another is the issue, another issue I was concerned about that uh, has also been touched on, so I won't get into that. And lastly, um, I also raised a technical question of the proposing to do work on town-owned land, and I guess my question is, uh, doesn't the town and whatever department or board is, has jurisdiction over the land they're working on need to be an applicant here as well. I mean, they, can't, they have no license agreement or no right to go onto town land and do work on town land without the permission and the involvement of whatever board of commission under whose jurisdiction the land is. Uh, the land, uh, is and I, I assume it's maybe parks and recreation. I, I have no idea, uh, but, that, uh, but one way or another, I think that question needs to be answered because this is, they're proposing to do work on land that they don't own and under which they have no right to uh, enter, as actually as I understand it. So those are my questions for today. Uh, I'm glad it's gonna be a continued uh, hearing because uh, we obviously need to go through this and get the answers to some of the questions that have been proposed tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Although I want to clarify that uh, this board has not determined whether the hearing will be continued or voted on this evening. That will be part of our next discussion. Thank you. Um, okay, so with that, I will um, turn two questions um, back to the, uh, a few of those questions back to the applicant, and then we'll get into the, the board discussion. Um, so I believe that the, um, the team from BHB had addressed uh, some of the question with regarding the um, truck turning radius. So if you could perhaps provide just um, another update on, on that and a little bit more clarification, and then some additional um, information on the, uh, once that is complete, we'll move to the information on the panels 
um, on a, on the rear of the of the building. So, um, Attorney Anessi, I'll okay. ask you to orchestrate between your team, please. All right, I will pick the uh, people who have to respond. Eric, could you respond on the uh, truck turning issue? Sounds good. Um, yeah, so we we ran the turns to to make sure that they could maneuver in there. Um, that's the last thing the applicant wants is to, to not have the trucks be able to get in or out. Um, we, we, we ran them also assuming, you know, eight foot off of the opposing curb for a parked vehicle to be able to get in or out of that, um, of the parking lot, or of the, um, the, the curb cut. Um, with that being said, you're correct on the, the 26 foot um, box truck, the actual length is about 34 and a half feet. Um, as far as the sign goes, you know, we, we didn't want to say, you know, restrict trucks over 34 and a half feet since the normal everyday language is the standard 26 foot box truck. Um, so we can certainly work on that sign of what we'd want to show for it um, to, to limit the actual truck that's going in there um, and how that size wants to be, you know, shown on that. Um, so we can certainly do that as well. But we thought that was the most appropriate sign because it would be more familiar to, to most users and tied back to their lease agreements, um, as Jesse had mentioned. Great, thank you. That's very helpful. Um, and Attorney Messi, the uh, the uh, panels. Yeah, a little more information on the on the panels on the back of the building. Yeah, uh, Jan, you want to address that issue? Uh, yes, I can. Those are um, not reflective panels. Uh, it is a, a plastic mesh, so it's actually partially open. Uh, there's a small grid of, of, of pattern on the plastic, uh, but it is not reflective at all. Uh, and the image that we're showing, like I said, happens to be of some trees, but it would not be uh, reflective uh, in any manner uh, uh, at all. And I'm assuming that that is something that, um, you know, one of the things we have not requested yet, but um, I would like to receive, and it's something that could be done um, through administrative review, following um, following any approval, um, or perhaps at a, at a future hearing, is a sample of of some of that material. So I wanted to just confirm that that's something that you would be amenable to. And I see attorney. You can certainly do that, Rachel. Yes. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Um, there was also a question around um, fill, whether there is any uh, fill required um, as part of the, the site work uh, at the rear of the site. Eric? Yep. Um, yeah, sorry, I thought we had kind of addressed that last hearing, but yeah, we are filling slightly up on that back edge by about, it's probably, you know, it ranges between a foot to 18 inches along that backside. Our finished floor elevations, elevation 79. Uh, which is pretty comparable to the existing building out there in certain locations. Um, so that back edge of the property, um, we are grading up slightly for the, uh, the parking area, but it's not a substantial fill amount. Great, thank you for the clarification. All right, so at this time, um, I'd like to turn the discussion back uh, to, the, to the board um, and I'll start with Ken. Yeah, um, they're just, Two things I think I, I would like. Uh, I, I think I would like to request a, uh, a, continu a continuous of this so we can get a couple issues uh, resolved to make everybody more comfortable. I'm not trying to stall the project at all. I'm supportive of this project. Uh, if uh, VHB can just overlay uh, a truck turning uh, radius on the CAD drawings, you guys probably have done that already. Just dash it out showing a uh, 20, 26 foot uh, box truck uh, doing a three point turn for, at the loading dock and at the entrance where you turn in off Dudley Street, that would just solve everybody's issues of can a truck enter or can a truck maneuver around inside there. Uh, and it would just put that all to bed because uh, once you put that overlay in, it, it, is, it is what it is. It's one of those computer overlays you guys you must have, right? Is he head nodding? Yes. Yeah. I've done that in the past. Um, uh, and then also, if you guys take another look at that eastern elevation with the rain leaders, uh, you know, um, you either could um, somehow maybe recess the, the, the leaders into the wall of it so it's still outside, 
I know you, uh, your desire to have all the regulars outside for water protection, it makes a lot of sense and, uh, and I agree with you there, or somehow integrate, integrate that in with the design of the patterns and the reveals and the colors you have. So that it, it, it right now looks like just three lines drawn straight across the, uh, the building. And uh, if you can do something about that. Um, and also with the mesh screen in the back, I think Rachel's correct. If we, and you know, if you guys can submit something else to look at as far as what design pattern you want to use there, uh, I, I applaud you for uh, putting that mesh screen there. It's, it's, it's good. And uh, it, it's going to address, address a lot of issues back there. Uh, is that going to be backlit at all? Do you know? Uh, the intention is not to provide any backlighting on that at all. No, sir. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and I'm assuming there's more than it's not going to be a couple inches it'll be like a like a foot away or something like that yeah it's uh just enough to get it off of the uh, envelope of the building so i think they vary depending on what your exterior material is so uh, i believe it's uh anywhere from uh, six to six to eight six to eight inches uh, okay. off the face of the building just, um, and it's much more for uh, just attachment to, to the building but uh it's, it's not um it's not too far off the face of the building uh, I think in Cambridge, where they had put it too too tight, uh, it became a, a bird nesting uh, sanctuary. If it was, if it was <laughs> back there and they, they get back there. So you have to pull it off enough where it doesn't become that. Agreed. Uh, That's something certainly to consider. So. The manufacturer is, is well versed in that now, I'm sure. Yes. And we'll rely on them for their expertise on that. Yes, sir. Yep. That's about it for now, Rachel. Great. Thank you, Ken. Gene, and I believe you had a topic you wish to return to as well. I, I agree with everything Mr. Lau said. I think we need to get some more information and have another hearing. Also, because I'd like to know more about the solar array that's going to be on the roof and to see some uh, graphics of what it will actually look like. Um, so I think that's important. Um, Yes, the, the issue that I wanted to raise, and Mr. Lau raised it last time, and I, I didn't really understand it until I read some of the materials afterward and thought about it, was that the building is, a, I think it's a 10 by 10 grid system. And I believe that the applicant said that um, because of that, the building probably couldn't be used for anything else. So if the self-storage ever went away, the building would probably have to be demolished to um, be used for anything else. And that sort of bothers me a little bit. And I, I'm just wondering if it bothers anyone else on the board that we would be approving a building that doesn't have any other use. Usually when you have an industrial building and the use ends, it can be repurposed for something else and doesn't necessarily have to come down. So I just wonder if people are concerned about that. And if they're not, I understand that. But if they are, then it would be redesigning the building to, to a bigger grid space. But I'm just a little concerned and want to hear what my colleagues on the board have to say about that. Um, I'll also just mention that I've um, gone to Arlington Self Storage, the other facility in the area. Uh, to see if there are spaces available in the art. So I think that um, at least as far as immediate need goes, um, it's not as if the other one in the area has had storage facilities available during um, the few times that I've looked between now and the previous um, hearing. And, um, and then I guess the other thing is some of the, um, ways to deal with the stormwater, I think ultimately will be the responsibility of the Conservation Commission, whose charge includes uh, protection of uh, Millbrook and, and the area around Millbrook. So they'll make their decision after we do. Thank you, Jean. Uh, I'll go to Melissa next and you know we'll circle back to, to, the, to the question about the um, the, the 10 foot base spacing. Melissa. 
Um, thank you. Apologize for my video situation, but I don't have further questions at this point. Um, Rachel, are we waiting to discuss any of Jean's comments? Is that how I understand it? Uh, nope. If you if you want to weigh in on the um, template day spacing, this this would be the, the time to do so. Well, I was thinking in terms of it being built for any other kind of use. Um, I mean, I'm I'm kind of perplexed, Jean, um, what you like. Typically, these buildings are built kind of sole purpose, and we're getting what's being presented. I'm kind of curious on what your thinking is with the flexibility. Um, so um, I, I guess I'm asking Gene back if what is his expectation with the flexibility and how this is built? Yeah, yeah just um, what came up last time, I believe the applicant said, you know, they built it this way and it really can't be repurposed for anything because of all the columns. So it wouldn't be able to be used. And I'm just raising the question for the board members of whether we should be concerned that we'd be approving a building that couldn't be repurposed. So let's say if in some number of years, they don't want to use it as a self-storage building anymore, they abandon it. And then it sits there unused and can't be used for anything else until somebody else tears it down. So that was my understanding from the last meeting. And that's what I just want to raise to the board members. Thanks for the clarification, Jean. Uh, Melissa, any, any other questions or comments? Yeah, well, I mean, it does bother me, but I don't think that is unique to this building. Um, I think that's a trend that we're seeing a lot with some of these sole purpose buildings. So um, it, does it bother me? No, I think, you know, you guys know what the bigger issue that bothers me. <laughs> right. Um, but thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, Steve, any additional questions, um, comments, thoughts yeah. on continuation? Just a few and I'll, I'll try to be quick. Um, <clears throat> regarding the transportation to management, transportation demand management plan. Um, I'd ask the applicants to consider instead of preferential carpool space, uh, a shower for the employees. Um, I think that's a much nicer amenity or in m perhaps more, more usable. Um, but that to me is, I'm just asking them to consider it. It's not a, it's not a deal breaker to me. Uh, like Mr. Lau, I would like to see a, also like to see a turning diagram for a 20 foot, 26 foot box <laughs> truck. Um, and regarding Mr. Benson's question, I'm not concerned that they're building, that this building is constructed special purpose for storage. Um, I, I think the applicants are prepared to make an investment and, you know, they would, I would, I would hope plan to, you know, keep it going for a long time. Um, I do have just one final question. Um, with regards to the um, stormwater management system, uh, what size of a storm will the current, will the system be able to retain completely on site uh, based on the NOAA 14 plus uh, rainfall estimates? Eric uh, from PHP, I see that you unmuted to answer that. Yeah, I'd have to confirm on the, uh, our tables, but our overall design intent was to make sure that um, to reduce the, the future 10 year storm to be less than the existing two. And that was based on um, initial discussions um, with the town engineer mm -hmm. um, on the intent of kind of what, what the, um, the regulations were trying to get at um, okay. with, with the stormwater management parameters. <clears throat> yes, thank you. I, and I did notice that, um, you know, for both of the uh, both of the points on Dudley Street and towards the rear of the property, there was a significant reduction in flow to um, com as compared to current conditions. So I, I just wanted to, you know, commend you for that. Nothing further, Madam Chair. Great. Thank you, Steve. Um, and then, uh, Ken, I will go to you to see if you have any comment regarding uh, Gene's question to the to the board, and then I'll weigh in after that. Yeah, Gene. Um, I think 
when I first asked that question, was it a 30 by 30 base facing? Because that would lead to uh, be able, the ability to uh, do all the structures within that. But um, I see no problem uh, right now with, uh, with a purpose-built building. Uh, I just asked, was there flexibility? I don't think we should be uh, basing an approval on a building that's flexible enough for future something. Um, I think we're uh, approving what's appropriate for this building that, that's going here right now. And, you know, um, yes, 10 by 10 is very difficult to do anything else but storage. But I think with a 10 by 10, I think you can get, if you get creative, you can uh, do housing there easily. Anything else, Ken? No. Okay. Um, Gina, I'll, I'll just um, answer the, the, the same way. I mean, it, it's interesting. I'm, I'm, my office is currently in a building that was built for cold storage. So I have very, very unique homes and, and, um, and, uh, and other items. Uh, so I, I think that there, there's certainly, you, you can get very creative with trying to repurpose um, really unique structural uh, considerations within, within a building. So I'm personally okay with it um, to answer your question. So I appreciate the discussion and everybody weighing in on it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, let's see. So at, at this time, um, I know that Ken was very specific that he felt that we should um, continue the hearing. I have a list of, um, let's see here, of eight items that have been requested by, by the board. Um, most of them seem like um, they're items that, that could be um, that they could be addressed without a significant uh, amount of additional time, but I'll run through these um, and see if they're, uh, see if we can uh, align with a, a time um, for a uh, continued hearing at which time we hopefully will be able to address all of these questions um, and be able to, 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 to vote on the, uh, on the proposal. Um, so Attorney Inessi, I'm gonna run through these for you. Um, so the first one I have is to look at integrating the vertical lines of the gutter with the facade design. Um, if not recessing them um, and uh, ensuring that that facade then speaks to the opposite facade of the, of the building. Um, the second one I have is to reconsider re elimination of the monument sign. The third I have is eliminate the illumination of the office sign. The fourth is to um, change the specification for the bike rack to an inverted U rack. Steve, that is correct. Okay. Um, number five is to provide a plan, a site plan showing um, the truck turning radius for the largest allowable truck, which is the 26 foot box truck. And again, I think we will leave that to you to figure out the, the verbiage. That's not something that I think we're necessarily going to regulate in the signage, knowing that especially we've also discussed you adding that to a lease agreement. Um, number six, to provide either a material sample or more information on the, um, the mesh screen material in the rear of the building. Uh, number seven is to um, provide additional information of the solar array on the roof. Uh, all we have right now is, is some uh, verbal remarks. We don't have anything uh, written on that at this time. And the last item I have is to, for your uh, um, uh, tr uh, transportation demand management plan, to consider a shower for employees instead of the preferential parking for carpools, given the number of employees that you indicated would be on site at any time, I, I agree with that request. I think that that would be more meaningful um, as an alternative solution for your employees. I will go back to the board and see if I missed anything. Ken. Yeah, can, can I, uh, you, you mentioned gutter. I think you meant down leader, right? Yes, I apologize. Yes, the rain leaders. Thank yes. you. And then also, um, what's the other one you uh, mentioned? The monument sign? 
No, no, you got that one, hundred uh, uh, percent. The truck turning radius. The truck turning radius is yeah. a diagram. Uh, no, nope, maybe Correct. maybe it's not that. I don't know. There's one other thing. Just, uh, I just want to clarify a little bit more. Um, I see Jenny has her hand up. Maybe she has the same question. Okay. Okay, Jenny. Not related to this. Okay. Go ahead. I don't. I, I don't recall right now. You don't recall. Okay. All right. Oh, Kelly. I think you would ask for more details on what the actual design that would be printed on the panels would be. Oh yes, the, the image on yeah. the. Uh, the, the image sorry, one hundred percent yeah. correct, Kelly. Thank yeah. you. So it's the material and image. Image. The Thank image you. is is key. Correct. Thank you, Ken. Sorry Thank about Kelly. that. <laughs> about my uh, old age. No, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, anything else, Kim, before I move to Jenny? No. no. Okay, Jenny. Um, since now I know you asked for an image, do you mean as a sample or you want to see that on a plan? I think we'd like to see, um, you know, specific, you know, it, is that the specific image, what's on the rendering that is being proposed? Mm -hmm. And um, if, if not, wh what is being proposed? And um, We'd also like to see a, a, a sample um, of, of the actual material. Okay, I had that. Um, the other thing is that I think would be important to see is the, um, the limit of their construction work in relationship to the parcel boundaries, um, including their parcel, but in relationship to the town parcels, because I'm actually, I am not sure about that. And the, uh, the abutting, property is actually under the jurisdiction of parks and recreation, there is a process that they would go through in order to be able to access their parcel by getting permission through parks and recreation as also uh, part of the um, NOI process. I'm sure that that will also come up um, with the Conservation Commission, but I just, I think that we do need to see a, in the site plan, how the parcel relates to the other parcels and where the limit of work is. Great, thank you. I have that one now on our list. Any questions, Attorney Anessi, on, on that request? Nope. Okay, nope. great. Um, let's see, I'll go to Jean now. Anything that we missed or wanted to be clarified? No, I don't have anything to add, thank you. Great, thanks. Melissa? No, nothing to add. Great, thank you. Steve? Nothing further. All right. Um, so, at this time, before we uh, take a motion to continue the public hearing, um, Attorney Anessi and team, if we could look out at some future dates. So we do have a meeting on um, May 16th. I'm just going to look. That is most likely also going to be a town meeting evening. So we would need to start it. It would be another 6.30 to 7.45, 7.00. Uh, 745-750 meeting. Is that enough time for you? Team, can we have uh, Jesse and Eric? Can we have our material together by then? I would uh, very much like to have that as our next meeting date if we can. Eric, Jesse? Yeah, I mean, at least the stuff, I think it's more going to be, I guess, Jan, I'd like to check in with you on the uh, the architectural pieces, and then um, if we need to get a sample of the screen, um, if if that's uh, you know. Jan, can you chime in as well, Jan? Uh, yes, the uh, the image uh, information we've asked for certainly can be done by that time. I'll reach out first thing in the morning to the sign manufacturer uh, and see how quickly. But I would say. Um, um, that we could meet that date, uh, even if we have to expedite the uh, materials. But I, I would say that uh, let's not let that keep us from meeting on 16th. I'll make sure we get that material. Great, thanks. And just to that to that topic, if the material sample isn't available, but we're able to review everything else, I feel like that's something that we could certainly um, always follow up as a um, as a condition, or a, again a, a follow up to the um, to the actual hearing through administratively. Good. Okay, that's great. Thank you for that. Why don't we go with that date then, gentlemen? May 16. Agreed? Good. Yes, sir. Yeah. Great. And Jenny, if you could Thank just you. confirm um, the date that they would need to submit materials for you. Um, I would say 
We would want it the Wednesday before. That'd be May 11th? Yes. Okay, I see some head nodding. Okay. And then do you want to talk about the 23rd separately? I think separately. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that following this meeting. Um, so is, uh, so with that list, uh, so Attorney Ness, did you have any questions on the, I believe there were um, uh, I do not. Nine items. Okay, we'll great. Just, uh, discuss that among our team. Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Uh, so is there a motion to continue um, the public hearing for docket number 3690 to um, Monday, May 16th at 6.30 p.m.? So motioned. I second the motion. Great. We'll take a roll call vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Dean. Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm the yes as well. Thank you so much. And we will see you back here on the 16th. Thank you. Thank you all. Great. Thank you. Um, and so before we adjourn, um, I just wanted to talk uh, schedule quickly. Um, so I actually have a conflict. We, we have a, another meeting scheduled on the 23rd. Um, and I have a conflict that evening. Jenny, do we currently have anything else scheduled that evening? Nothing else is scheduled that evening. Okay, great. So I wanted to see if there was any concern with the board for um, for eliminating that meeting uh, on the 23rd. I'll just run through and see. Jean? The only concern I have is that I will be missing the meeting on June 6th. Okay. Is the next meeting after that. So, oh, may I, Rachel? Please, go ahead. So, I mean, this is important because the only reason you need your June 6th meeting is if you have, if we have any applications filed basically by in two weeks from now, correct, Kelly, in terms of legal notice. Um, so, and I, I do not have, anticipate any new special permit applications coming in. So, we, that might be another meeting that you potentially do not need, um, you know, again depending upon the outcome of the meeting on the 16th. Okay. Um, so then you have one more meeting in June. So what we could do, um, is there a date, Jenny, by which we need to cancel the meeting on the 23rd or can we keep it on the calendar and make that call on this, you know, either next, we have oh. two meetings next week as well as the 16th when we could make that call as long as there's no, no need to cancel it earlier. You can have every Monday in May if you want. No, um, um, <laughs> the, um, Except for Memorial Day, please. Um, the uh, the twenty third, you can yeah yeah you can decide on the sixteenth, but you could also decide on the Thursday before, which is typically by the date the time by which we post an agenda. So okay, you know, if, you, if there was some reason to keep a meeting, we can keep it, and then if we needed to cancel, we can do that as well. Great, thank you. Um, and that that one, I, I, I'm I'm going to be traveling. It's it's a it's a possibility for me to. Um, time in remotely, I'll just not be in state. Um, so why don't we hold that for now? And if we need it, um, we'll figure out how to how to make that one work logistically. Um, and if we don't, we'll cancel it in the future. Can I bring up one more question? Please. We didn't schedule anything past June, have we? Um, we scheduled up until May or something, all right? And that's it. I think we scheduled, no, we actually scheduled um, the rest of the, the rest of the year. So we're through December. Oh, we, we are. Nothing in July, I believe. There's a, there's an off month. Yeah, there's two in June. There's the sixth and the twentieth. I'll look it up. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I I thought I couldn't find anything uh, scheduled, and I was trying to schedule a vacation, but that's okay. Okay. If you if you need um, so they they should all be in the uh, calendar. Yeah. Calendar I, now. Okay. I'll look. I'll look at. That. I don't need Great. to hold the rest of the people up. Great. Thank you. Uh, so we are right on time to 745 now. Thank you everyone for staying on agenda. I really appreciate it. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn to town meeting? So motioned. I'll second that motion too. All right. Uh, we'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yep, Thank you. Thanks.